This unit conversion doesn't have a lot of individual conversions, and maybe there are ways to kind of deal with this just doing one piece at a time. But for the sake of habit, I like to create a table whenever I have unit conversion. So I'm following the same method no matter what. That way, no matter what happens, no matter what kind of traps they throw at me, I've got the same kind of plan and the same tools to avoid any traps and tricks in those uh, in those questions. And this one has a bit of a story. This is something I used to do in the old SAT a lot. They kind of stole this question from the old SAT, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, in uh, April 18, uh, on April 18th, 1775, Paul Revere set off on his midnight ride from Charlestown to Lexington. If he had written straight to Lexington without stopping, he would have traveled 11 miles in 26 minutes. Right there, that sounds like a rate. Let's draw our table, and then we have 11 miles in 26 minutes. In such a ride, what would the average speed of his horse have been to the nearest tenth of a mile per hour? That's also a rate, right? So the key is when we add this to the table, we have to put the uh, the miles on the other side because we want things to cross out, right? If there's something, if there's a unit on the left and a unit on the right, they cross out. So even though you might be tempted to do uh, miles per hour or miles is kind of on the left because that's how we're reading it left to right. Remember, we got to make sure things cross out. So what we have is we have x because we don't know the number of miles per hour well that's one hour so we also have to be able to convert a speed into like almost like two units and, and that's what every speed is right miles per hour meters per second it's a per one thing we just don't say the one because it's kind of built into the language of how we talk about it but for these kinds of questions, we need to have two things, and now we do. And so the miles are gonna cross out, but we're not done because we need to cross out minutes and hours, so just try to think, are there conversions that are gonna get us across from that? So we know that one hour is 60 minutes, so forgive the handwriting, but there you go. Hours are gone, hours are gone, minutes are gone, minutes are gone. When everything is gone, we know we're done. Now we just draw a little line here, and we go down the list, and we multiply. So 11 times 60, calculator time, 11 times 60, uh, times one technically, but who cares? So that's 660. And then 26x, so that's easy, 26x, put an equal sign between them. And final step is if you need to, solve for x. So divide by 26, divide by 26, we get some messy number. So x is equal to 25 points. Now let's be careful here. Well, technically it's 3, 8, four, six, but they want it to the nearest tenth. Make sure you follow those instructions. The, the number of times my students get stuff wrong because they just don't read an instruction how to round. It just drives me nuts. So nearest tenth means this eight is gonna round this to 25.4. So there you go, 25.4. That is the answer you should put in here and that is the correct answer. So yeah, not so bad. I mean, question one in this set had a lot more conversions, but this one only really has one. And yeah, there are ways to convert 26 minutes to a number of hours beforehand, but why bother, right? Why treat each individual unit conversion question as a different kind of problem to solve based on the units that they give you? If this you use, if you use this table method, no matter what they give you, you're kind of following the same pattern every time. So definitely stick to it. it. It really keeps you organized and prevents any careless mistakes or trap answers.